So, after my last Breath of the Wild 2 video, I received a bunch of comments from you guys telling me to compare the old ruins found in the Breath of the Wild 2 teaser trailer to the old ruins found in the original Breath of the Wild. And after doing some research, while I'm not the first to discover this, I found a huge connection between what is seen underground in the Breath of the Wild 2 teaser and what is found in the mysterious ruins throughout Hyrule in the original Breath of the Wild. Now at first I suggested that these ruins were once created by the Sheikah, as shrines can be found throughout most of them, but as suggested by many of you, these ruins may have belonged to a different tribe, and maybe the Sheikah utilized them to trial the hero by placing shrines within them. But if it isn't created by the Sheikah, then who? Well, throughout the Firon region, you can see a glimpse of a civilization that is forgotten, known as the Zonai Ruins. All that's left of the Zonai are the ruins, but what's very interesting about these ruins is that they are very similar to the many structures found underground where Link and Zelda find Ganondorf's body. These structures can be found elsewhere all throughout Hyrule, with the three giant labyrinths being great examples of their structures now in ruin. And in the Breath of the Wild 2 teaser, there's a small scene showing a temple that strongly resembles the labyrinths. And this temple is where presumably Ganondorf's body lies, as the trailer suggests. Along with the broken down pillars sharing a similar pattern design to each other. Now while already this seems like some solid evidence connecting the two, there are far more things that really drive this theory. First is a symbol found throughout the ruins. As seen by the labyrinths and other parts of the ruins scattered throughout Hyrule, you can find a spiral that reminds me of the Kokiri Emerald Spiral from Ocarina of Time. This spiral is known to represent courage, as it's even the symbol Firon makes with its tail when depicted as a monkey in Twilight Princess so we can confirm that this symbol is of the Feron region. Now speaking of the goddess Feyror, in Breath of the Wild there are three dragons that are known to protect its land, and the dragon of the Feron region is Feyrosh, with the dragon Dinral representing the goddess Din with power, protecting the Elden region, and the dragon Nadra representing the goddess Nehru with wisdom, protecting the Lanayru region. So, with Feroj protecting the Feron region, to no surprise the Zonai seem to have honored Feroj, as throughout the Zonai ruins, the Spring of Courage is located at the end of it. And leading up to the spring is filled with the Zonai's ruins, along with a statue of a giant serpent-like creature surrounding the spring itself. The statue may have represented the dragon Feroj, as Feroj is the dragon of courage, and its skill is required to enter the spring to gain access to the shrine. So clearly the Zonai I must have once honored the goddess Feyror, the goddess of courage. Now this is where the theory gets even more interesting. So first, we can conclude that the Zonai tribe was a tribe of courage. Coming from the Feron region is what they represented, as their symbol even shows the spiral referencing the Kokiri symbol. But also, this same spiral effect can be found on the weird energy-like hand sealing Ganondorf's body. And on top of that, the color of the hand and the spiral it creates is the same color of the spirits of the champions and King Rome, along with the same color of the luminous stones shown all throughout the trailer. And as we know, the luminous stones are known to carry souls of the dead, which makes a lot of sense with it being the same color as the already dead spirits. And what's even more interesting is how the Zonai seem to be connected to the luminous stones. As throughout some of their structures, they have seemed to use luminous stones as eyes, putting it on their serpent-like and bird-like statues. And you can also find a giant luminous stone in Typhlo Ruins, where it's surrounded by a bunch of serpent heads. Clearly what's in the Typhlo Ruins seem to represent the Zonai tribe, and what's interesting is that it's lit by luminous stones. Similar to how in the Breath of the Wild 2 teaser, everything is also lit by luminous stones. So maybe this tribe is known to use luminous stones throughout their structures to light things up. But on top of all of that, with the Zonai seeming to have honored the dragon Feyrosh, even Feyrosh seems to represent that same color, with the lightning it shoots out being a color similar to the luminous stones and the spirits of the dead. So with all of these connections, we can say that possibly the Zonai tribe, a tribe that created all of these ruins, also represented the goddess of courage, Feyror, the same part of the Triforce that Link shares. As Link has been known from previous Zelda titles to be a Highland that grows up in the Feron region, where he then awakens his courage to start his quest to save Hyrule. But in Breath of the Wild, we seem to miss out on all of that. As Link is known to have already gotten the Master Sword, but he fails on his first attempt to defeat Ganon, and that may be why he failed, similar to Zelda not being ready. 
As the King of Hyrule once mentioned to Link, that the power to defeat Ganon lays dormant underground. And originally throughout Breath of the Wild, you think that the King of Hyrule was talking about the Divine Beasts, and that they were needed to defeat Ganon. But as we know throughout Breath of the Wild, the Divine Beasts are not needed to defeat Ganon. And throughout the Legend of Zelda series, Link had never needed the Divine Beast to defeat Ganon. All he needed was Zelda and the power within him, along with the Master Sword, to do the job. So maybe Link doesn't have the power to defeat Ganon yet. And the power needed is the same power the King of Hyrule mentioned, it being the glowing mysterious hand found that is sealing Ganon. As it then transfers to Link, maybe giving Link the power to do the job he was destined to do. But this theory raises another question. If this was the Zonai who was behind making the seal for Ganondorf, then why? Could it be that the previous hero was once a Zonai? Maybe born Hylian as he usually is, but accepted into the Zonai tribe from a young age, similar to how he was known as a Kokiri in Ocarina of Time, but then realizing he is a Hylian destined to do much more, with saving all of Hyrule. And if that is the case, it still doesn't answer the question on why seal Ganon and not kill him off for good. We've seen the sages attempt to execute him before, but failed. But it's all on the hero's hands. He's the one destined to do it. Why just seal him? Now obviously this may just be Hyrule's destiny, as they're forever cursed by Ganondorf thanks to Demise. But for attempting to seal off his body, it doesn't seem to have worked, as dark energy can be seen leaking from his body, possibly creating Calamity Ganon. So the question is, why is Hyrule's biggest threat sealed underneath their kingdom? Why not completely destroy his body? Well, this is where my theory gets a bit darker than I imagined Nintendo going. But as the director of the series, Aonuma, said, that this game is going to be darker than Majora's Mask. And in Majora's Mask, the moon crashes down and kills everyone. So this game has to be pretty damn dark to top that. But anyways, my theory is, is the reason why they keep Ganondorf's body around is that they're afraid that he will be reincarnated. Similar to how Link and Zelda are, as they die throughout the timeline, but are reincarnated to save Hyrule when needed. So what if Ganondorf is exactly the same? Just like Link and Zelda, he holds a piece of the Triforce, and that power can be passed down throughout his descendants when reincarnated. But maybe in order for this to actually happen, similar to how Link and Zelda are throughout Hyrule's timeline, they must die first before being reincarnated with the Triforce's power. So if Ganondorf were to completely die, losing his body, he would eventually be reincarnated. This would explain why the legend of the Gerudo male born every hundred years doesn't exist anymore. It could be because the male must be Ganondorf. But since his body is still around, he can't be reincarnated. His spirit just returns to his original body. So for the Zonai to avoid Ganondorf from reincarnating into a new Gerudo baby and losing track of him, they decide to keep his body locked up underground, where they seal his spirit hoping he won't return that way. So possibly with his body being sealed and his spirit being unable to re-enter it, it creates Calamity Ganon. As he has prophesied to always curse Hyrule, so even if they try their best to stop him from coming back, he will return in some way, shape, or form. So with his body still remaining, there has been no need for the cycle to continue, which may be why there has been no new Gerudo male born after Ganondorf. And now with whatever may have happened resulting in the hand unsealing Ganondorf, he is now free, back in his body once more. Unsnapping his neck, similar to how Zant snapped his neck to kill him at the end of Twilight Princess. Or we could look at it another way. Maybe the hand isn't sealing Ganondorf, but actually resurrecting him. See, another theory regarding the Zonai would be that they are using their magic powers to revive Ganondorf. Cause as mentioned, the hand is the same color as the luminous stones representing the dead. So maybe, instead of the hand sealing Ganondorf, it is reviving him by feeding him souls of the dead. And this could be why Calamity Ganon killed so many people, to absorb their souls to revive himself. Maybe all the souls that were killed off during the Great Calamity are now luminous stones found underneath Hyrule, with their souls now trapped in these luminous stones, and the hand taking these souls out and putting it into Ganondorf's body. While I'm uncertain that any of these Zonai theories may be true, there is at least some evidence supporting these. And while I strongly believe that the Zonai may be behind this, it could also be the Sheikah. I mean, maybe this mysterious magical hand is of a Sheikah monk, awaiting to pass this magic down onto Link. Similar to how they awaited Link at the end of each shrine to give him the spirit orb, before fading away. And worth noting that all the monks are old and withered as a result for waiting for Link for this long. 
and the mysterious hand seems to also be old and withered similar to these monks. So maybe it was the Sheikah's task to give Link the power he needed, the power that lay dormant underground. Or this could just be the magic of the previous hero who was maybe once a part of the Zonai, now passing down his powers on to the new hero. Overall, this would be really deep for Nintendo to explore such an idea, but I feel like there's a lot of things that connect this theory together, so I'd really love to see something like this in Breath of the Wild 2. And while I came up with the Gerudo cycle regarding the Ganondorf reincarnation theory, I want to thank all the comments suggesting to look further in the Zonai theory, as I had a lot of fun connecting the two between each other. And please let me know if you have any other theories you'd like for me to further explore. Overall, I can't wait for any new info we get from this game. Stay on the lookout as I'll update you guys and give you as many theories as I can with every new piece of info we get regarding Breath of the Wild 2. But as always, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed or if you're excited for Breath of the Wild 2. Anyways, I've been Zelda Master and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!